You're listening to Catholic Chicago. Ahead, the Archdiocese of Chicago brings you programs about the people, events, and issues that touch our lives. Welcome to Catholic Chicago. And welcome to the Voice of Charity. I'm Katie Breedeman here with my colleague Phil Zapeda. Good morning, Phil. Good morning, Katie. And we extend a warm hello to all of you who are listening on WNDZ, 750 AM here in Chicago, and all who are watching our live stream on YouTube and Facebook at Catholic Chicago. It's Thanksgiving week. And the excitement is building at Catholic Charities as we prepare to host the 20th annual Thanksgiving Day Feast to hundreds of guests at noon this Thursday, November 23rd. And here to give us a preview of this joyous event, Katie, are Noreen Russo, the talented and charming Associate Director of Special Projects at Catholic Charities, and the equally charming and and enjoyable and talented Abigail Barron, who is a dedicated volunteer of our Tuesday Night Supper program. Welcome, Noreen and Abby. We are glad to have you here. Thank Thanks, you. Man. Really, thank you both so much for being here. You know, and Noreen, I'm wondering if we could start with you. Your commitment to the supper program is incredible. You have amazing organizational skills and attention to detail, and you make sure everything goes well so that more than 300 people are fed each and every Tuesday. You graciously welcome and instruct each group of volunteers that comes to help, and you welcome the guests each week and act as the face of Catholic Charities in many cases with Father Wayne Watts and Mary Anzalotti and and, and other leaders, letting the guests know that they are among friends. From start to finish, you're a fabulous ambassador for Catholic Charities and the supper program throughout the year. Can you tell us about this Thanksgiving feast this coming Thursday? Yeah, so it's super exciting. We have um, Thanksgiving and we're lucky enough to welcome over 300 people to enjoy a feast. Um, We start the meal at 11 uh, a.m. and it goes to about one because we're serving 300 people um, and they all come in to sit down. So we do a little bit of a once they eat, we let more people in um, and it's an unbelievable time. So just to clarify, Noreen, what time do the doors open then on Thursday for guests to come in? 11 a.m. Okay, great. Now, uh, uh, Noreen, I'm going to put you on the spot here like I do with my family before I arrive. Um, I want to know what's on the menu. <laughs> what's well, you said you said is you said feast. I'm like, "Great. What's the feast?" So, <laughs> let's hear it. From turkey, mashed potatoes, stuffing, um, pie, everything that you can imagine. So you're you're stri- you're hitting all those beats, though the good stuff. <laughs> That's fantastic. Maybe. So we we, yeah. we we say this all the time. Forgive me for for interrupting. Like okay, so to pull off that feast for for this many people on Thanksgiving, it takes a village. We say that all the time. Maybe we should rename the show. It takes a village. <laughs> we'll we'll think about that. I think you're right. Phil. But volunteers are likely still needed for this, right? Yes. So if you want to learn more about how to volunteer, you can call three one two two one seven. Three five, or sorry, one three five two. So that number three one two two one seven one three five two. It's also important to recognize that while thanks Thanksgiving volunteers are needed too, put it in the back of your mind that volunteers are needed for for suppers um, year round. We can we can talk a little bit about that later in the show. Um, but let's talk about the challenges for pulling off this this incredible event. N- Noreen, what's what are the greatest challenges in preparing and serving for so many people on Thanksgiving? Well, you know, Phil, I was thinking about it this morning, and I'm most nervous about decorating because, you know, we want to make this super okay. special. And um, although the meal is, um, you know, the most important thing, 
Uh, we also want to make this special and different than just an ordinary Tuesday night or meal that we have during the week. So uh, we go all out and we want to be super over the top this year um, because it always has been. Uh, and this year, um, just a special shout out to our caterer, Eddie, who um, was near and dear to our heart and has um, gone to God. So we're going to try to you know, following his footsteps uh, and make it as decorative as we can do it this year. Yeah, well, you know, our, our live stream is showing Noreen some photos of Eddie, you know, where as, as we look forward to this very happy celebration, you know, our hearts are so heavy uh, acknowledging his loss. Can you share uh, details about Eddie's dedication to Catholic Charities and, and how this is uh, going to be the first Thanksgiving, you know, without him leading um, this, this feast? Yeah, so Eddie was a dear friend of Catholic Charities, has um, donated many, many Thanksgiving and Christmas meals, uh, has been at every Tuesday night supper since I can remember, um, and just loved our guests and made sure that uh, they were treated like um, kings and queens. So uh, he had... I think two plates for everyone on Thanksgiving uh, and just was um, a champion of uh, the poor. So he really was. Yeah. And and uh, I had the honor of being with you at, at, at Eddie. It's Eddie Tomas is, is his name. And uh, I had the honor of being with you at his uh, funeral mass at St. John Birchman's Church on Saturday in which Father Wayne Watts celebrated th that mass. And, and one phrase that Father Wayne mentioned stayed with me, Noreen. He said, Eddie was over the top, that everything he did, every event that he planned as a caterer um, and as a volunteer at Catholic Charities, he wanted to make sure that it wasn't just a nice meal, but over the top. Can you talk about a little bit of experience that you had with that? Yeah, so as I said, um, you know, two plates for the Thanksgiving meal, uh, decorations like you'd never seen before. Um, and just a care for everyone receiving the utmost respect and um, dignity as they uh, came to the table at Catholic Charities. We've, so, we, we've got wonderful photos famous. here with uh, uh, Eddie with different administrators at Catholic Charities, Monsignor Michael Boland, as well as our current uh, president and CEO, Sally Blount. He, he's been with Catholic Charities that long, right, Noreen? Uh, more than 10 years of coordinating uh, the Thanksgiving and Christmas meals, correct? Exactly. It's was... so impressive, isn't it, Phil? It, it, it is tremendous. And Noreen, you know, it, it's no wonder that as we look at these these pictures that are that are streaming from past Thanksgivings, that you're worried about this, the, the decorations. <laughs> the bar is high. <laughs> but it's what a lovely sentiment to carry through to the, understand that even the appointment, the, 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 the touch of the detail is important in honoring the humanity of these people on a, on a holiday when so many Americans are getting together with their families. And very often these may be individuals who are without families right. or part of families that are struggling. So, you know, as you as you as you go through this work and, you know, let me transition this over to to Abby. You know, what's going through your mind when you're providing food for these for these individuals uh, on this particular holiday? I think more than anything, it's amazing how much the volunteers get out of it. Um, you know, you see these these people who have nothing but the clothes on their back and they're so gracious and kind and they're so excited to be there because you know just to take what you just said phil about not spending time with family that is their family i mean a lot of these people come every single tuesday plus certain other days of the week that that meals are hosted by other groups and they start to get to know each other and they start to get to know us and i think that's one of the driving forces behind why i do it as much as i do because I know these people and I, I enjoy seeing them. And when I don't see them on a certain Tuesday, you know, you get nervous and it's, it's, where are they? Where's, where's Cal? Where's Alan? Um, but I think that's the, the big thing that sets these suppers apart, especially Thanksgiving is it's a, it's a, it's a safe space to enjoy a meal, but also to get that, that moment of having someone say your name, having someone recognize who you are and what you've been through and you know checking in and and saying 
you know, how's the job application coming or how's the family or whatever. And I think that means so much. It's a simple, it's a simple gesture that goes so far to a human being who doesn't have a lot and to turn it around. It makes me appreciate the very, very small things that I have in life. So it's a, it's a gift for us as volunteers to be able to be put in a position that we get reminded every day that we have so much to be grateful for and how appropriate on Thanksgiving. It's, it's, it's such a, a beautiful sentiment, Abby, and I want to dig into that a little bit more. It's interesting to also point out that, you know, these aren't individuals that we only see on, on Thanksgiving, right? They're regular attendees at the regular Tuesday night suppers and other suppers that are hosted at the Catholic Charities offices on, on North LaSalle Street there. So it truly is family to so many of those folks. I've, I've volunteered at those suppers, and you see how the, the the human spirit is really lifted. And to do that to a greater extent on Thanksgiving is just a tribute and a testament to the work that that you and Noreen are are doing. That Abby, I mentioned I want to dig into that a little bit more. You mentioned that you know that volunteers have an opportunity to go beyond serving just food here, right? Um, what would you use as a recruitment message to folks who might be interested in in helping out on Thanksgiving or at any of the any of the upcoming suppers? I think a big thing is, you know, especially after COVID, people people want to be involved. They, they want to do something. And, um, you know, I started doing this before COVID and I was itching to get back into it because I think, again, we just, people who have been blessed with so much, you, you want to be able to give back. And this isn't a, it isn't a massive commitment. It's literally an hour and a half to two hours on a Tuesday. You can come once a month, you can come once a week, you can come once every three months. You you make it work with how busy you are and how not busy you are. But I think that, again, the thing I keep coming back to is for me to be there every Tuesday is is a, I feel so good when I leave. And it's because I have a connection with these people. And it's a it's a really wonderful thing to be able to sit down with someone that you've seen week, week to week and have something good happen to them. Um, and they become family. So my I don't know, my recruitment would be do you want to you want to change your life, then go change someone else's. Beautifully said, Abby. And I have to say that, you know, your warmth and your positive energy um, is such a blessing to the Tuesday night suppers. <laughs> There's so many Tuesdays where I've been there and and you're quietly but effectively just spreading your warmth and your good cheer throughout the room. And, and so many guests just smile as you walk past them because they know how genuine you are. So we're so grateful for that. I hope you know that. Thanks, Katie. Yeah, no, I mean it sincerely. And and we're going to go to break in a minute. But, you know, before we do, Noreen, I just wonder if you could touch a little bit more on the fact that this isn't just a Thanksgiving meal this Thursday. Um, it's, it's really Catholic Charities wanting to make sure that these guests not only celebrate a holiday, uh, but just know that Catholic Charities is a friend in their life, right? Can you speak a little bit about that as we head to break? Yeah, I think uh, Abby and Phil and you have touched on it so wonderfully, but um, we consider our guests our family and, you know, it's only fitting that for a family, we'd have a feast for Thanksgiving to show them how grateful we are for them and how um, much we welcome them and uh, care about them and want them to feel love. Well, we're going to hear more about the Thanksgiving supper. We'll talk more about Eddie. We're going to take a break right now. You're listening to The Voice of Charity with our special guests, Noreen Russo and Abby Barron. We will be right back after these brief messages. It will be a special night to remember on Friday, December 1st at Catholic Charities 2023 Spirit of St. Nicholas Ball at the Chicago Hilton. The Spirit of St. Nicholas Ball is one of the most elegant galas of the holiday season in Chicago, and proceeds provide critical funding for our programs and services into the new year. Gather your families, friends, and work colleagues for an extraordinary black tie event 
to celebrate the Christmas season. Enjoy an opening reception, gourmet meal, and live entertainment courtesy of the Ken Arlen Orchestra, all in support of Catholic Charities. Don't miss this special night for a great cause on Friday, December 1st. To purchase tickets and learn about sponsorships for the Spirit of St. Nicholas Ball, visit catholiccharities.net or call 312-948-6864. That's 312-948-6864. say how can you spend your day with three-year-olds seeing the changes that they go through and just the journey and how they grow this is a very rewarding job even though at the end of the day we're not the highest paid people on earth and when I have a parent contact me and say my child loves school that to me I'm setting that foundation for their love of learning because really you are changing lives you are molding lives shape the next generation of leaders teach Apply today at artchicago.org slash schooljobs. Catholic Charities offers a wide variety of volunteer opportunities to those who want to share their time and help us serve people in need. Whether it's stocking the shelves of our food pantries, helping refugees learn the English language, tutoring school-aged children, becoming a mentor to young adults, sorting clothes in our clothing rooms, serving hot meals to those who are facing homelessness, or delivering meals and making cards to lift the spirits of our homebound seniors, we are deeply grateful to all those who want to join in our mission of mercy. Volunteer opportunities are updated weekly for people of all ages at ccofchicagovolunteer.com or just call us at 312-655-7053. That's 312-655-7053. Thank you for helping us follow Jesus' call to serve our neighbors in need. Welcome back to The Voice of Charity. I am Phil Zepeda with my colleague, Katie Breedeman. We are thrilled to be talking about the 20th annual Thanksgiving Day Lunch at Catholic Charities with the fabulous and amazing Noreen Russo and Abby Behrend, um, who are back with us on our on our stream here. Um, let me take it back to you, Noreen. Uh, Thanksgiving falls. It really starts the holiday season. We recognize that that brings additional um, uh, considerations and and emotion um, to many of our guests. Um, It's a good point to remember that everyone that's coming for Thanksgiving is usually at Catholic Charities five nights a week. Um, which we join in with uh, with uh, other community partners to host these meals. Tuesday nights is when Catholic Charities does it. But Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you can get um, a, a tremendous meal. But during the holidays, it takes on a different it takes on a different connotation. Um, it, it, talk to us about the challenges that you see, perhaps that might be related to the holiday season, and our guests. So, you know, <clears throat> as we've mentioned a couple of times, um, that there might be loneliness or a lack of family, um, you know, struggles with finances, housing um, that our guests uh, may be experiencing. And so it's super important for us and all of our partners uh, during the holiday season and I forgot to mention lack of proper clothes for uh, the season that most, you know, of our holidays coming up are in. Um, So it's super important for us and our partners to make sure that not only people feel welcome and have dignity um, and get a hot meal, but also, you know, we're, as Abby mentioned, um, speaking with client or our guests about, you know, maybe their financing, their housing situation, how they can get clothing, et cetera. So um, it's a super um, lovely time of year because we remember what we're super grateful for. And that's, you know, 
Um, the simple things, as Abby mentioned, that we take for granted sometimes, but see when we're um, surrounded by our guests in Vincent Hall. Um, but it's also a super stressful time for some of our clients who are experiencing homelessness, near homelessness, or newly arriving to our city. So, right. So uh, that, that, that's a key that point to remember. Excuse me for interrupting, but that's a key point to remember, isn't it, Noreen, that when people come for the dinners, it's also an opportunity for them to learn about more Catholic Charities programs and services, our vast network of programs and services throughout Cook and Lake County that can help them with the other challenges in their life, correct? Yes. Uh, so it's an intro to uh, our, all our other services, and we have many, many services. We have a clothing room, we have a food pantry, um, and those are just basic needs programs that we have. We also have counseling, and you name it, and we got it. So um, when we hear something, we try to provide what we can with the services we have. You know, it's that 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 approach of always operating with uplifting the dignity of, of guests at these these suppers and all clients of Catholic charity and maintaining that respect. And, you know, that's certainly what Eddie Temez it, it coordinated in his his giving to this this effort. Abby, I want to throw it back to you. And, you know, we've already recognized uh, that um, it's really hard to put into words of what Eddie meant um, to, to Catholic charities. I'd love to hear if you have a story that, that comes to mind about his work um, with the Thanksgiving meals and, you know, what what Catholic Charities meant to him. I think, you know, I was looking at the pictures you were circulating or circulating through and um, it's still pretty, it's still pretty raw. I mean, Eddie was the whole idea of our, of our Tuesday night suppers, Thanksgiving. Um, he was this quiet force that, you knew when he wasn't there. He didn't say much. He wasn't a he wasn't a huge talker. He didn't, you know, there are certain people that will talk your ear off. Eddie wasn't one of them. He was he was a very quiet, kind presence. And I think that is the only thing that I keep coming back to is we're feeling his loss because he did everything, but he did it with such a sense of joy. Um, this wasn't a this wasn't something that um it wasn't a job for him. It wasn't, wow, oh, I got to go do this. Like he loved it. And last Thanksgiving, um, you know, he has his, his loud pants on and he's got his turkey hat and uh, that's about as loud as, as Eddie would be. But you always, I mean, just coming in every single day, he always had a smile for you. He always, you know, how are you? Um, just a kind of a side hug. And you could see how the guests responded. I mean, there's a lot of us volunteers that are on the floor circulating. Eddie was, again, Eddie was always kind of in the background, but he was the driving force behind everything. Our, our, um, our live stream just had an awesome photo up of yeah. of Eddie Smack in the middle of uh, Father Wayne Watson and Cardinal Supich, you know. And so, as you said, he he's quietly present on this on the serving line as well. Uh, but you knew he was actively coordinating things. You knew he and another um, awesome caterer named Joe were in charge, and you just followed their lead, right? Right, Abby. Always. And what Joe and Eddie said went like: if you had questions, you go to Joe and Eddie. You don't go to anyone else. <laughs> So, <laughs> yeah. So, and, and and Noreen, Thanksgiving is a busy time, not just for these the, the the suppers and as we move into the holiday season, but our food pantries are in the holiday spirit too, right? They they need assistance, they need fuel, they've got some momentum going into these coming days and weeks as well, right? Yes. So, our nine food pantries are also providing. Four, they're providing turkeys and fixing for our guests to take home and serve. So many of our um, clients and guests at Catholic Charities are near homeless and um, they need that extra hand to get the turkey for Thanksgiving. So they are able to cook their own meal at home. Um, and we love spreading the cheer as much as we can. So it's not only at our feast that's at 721, but also in other people's own homes. 
And, and we invite everyone to go to catholiccharities.net to look up the locations of our food pantries in case they'd like to reach out and, and hear more about those uh, turkey giveaways and, and the turkey meal, the Thanksgiving meal giveaways. Right, Noreen? Yes. And and in your very busy schedule, on top of coordinating the Thanksgiving meal, you know, we know that you and, and our Senior Vice President, Marianne Zelotti, um, are also leading Cook County's efforts for Catholic Charities 20 and 23 Celebration of Giving. Um, how's it going? And, and are you in need of gifts or volunteers or maybe both? We're always in need of gifts and volunteers. Um <clears throat> And it's super simple. You can go to, or, or to volunteer, you can call 312-655-7401 uh, or email cog at catholiccharities.net in Cook County. And in Lake County, you can call 847-782-4210 or email cglc at catholiccharities.net. And to give gifts, um, you can visit catholiccharities.net slash give slash celebration, and it will bring you to our wish list. And we'd greatly appreciate anything that you can do. Yeah, it's really important. It, uh, if any of you listening didn't get those numbers or, or anything, search Catholic Charities of Chicago or go to catholiccharities.net. And those phone numbers and those contact links will be right there on that site. Noreen, in, in the time that remains with us here, um, kind of switching gears yet related, on no November 7th, the Catholic Charities Supper Program was officially named the Sister Joyce Dura uh, Supper Program. Can you remind us of how that came about? <laughs> so Catholic Charities got a generous um, donation in honor of Sister Joyce Dura. Um, and we're super excited because her life works was about um, giving to the poor. Um, she dedicated uh, her life and her work to um, making sure people were fed and clothed. And um, it's only fitting that our supper program has now been renamed the Sister Joyce Dura Supper Program. So we're super grateful for that as well. And, and Mr. Jim Ursay, the owner of the Indianapolis Colts and the Ursay family, you know, uh, donated this uh, large amount in, in memory of Sister Joyce Dura, who was a nun in central Illinois for almost 50 years. Um, and it's so inspiring that they're carrying her legacy on, um, you know, with this with this naming of our supper program um, in that regard. You know, Abby, I know you were there that night for the for the special ceremony as well. Can you talk to share with everybody the feeling in the room that uh, we're, you know, about about Sister Joyce, but also about, you know, how important this program is, that, that it's now being named in honor of this great nun. I think it's exciting. And I think more than anything, it's bringing recognition to what's going on in a whole new light. I mean, this, this woman dedicated herself to, to what we all say is Jesus's message. I mean, this is helping those that, that have nothing. And um, I think it's also really wonderful to know what's going to happen with that donation. You know, the room is gonna be transformed. So all of these people who who come here every night for a, for a warm meal, they're going to feel that they're having someone invest in them as well. You know, we really care about what you're, what you're seeing when you walk into the room. We want you to feel comfortable. We want you to enjoy your family meal each Tuesday. So I think it, it goes beyond just paint on the wall and somebody donating money. It's It's, it's really a, a, a recognition of how important our guests are to us and how we want to make it better for them. Abby, I think that's that's so well said. And having volunteered, it's it's not get them in, get them out. It's no. No. welcome. How can we help you? What else can I get you? I, I care about you and I pray for you. I think it's just tr tremendous. Thank you both of you so much for being on the show with us today. We are so grateful to both of you for this. We really do think, uh, Noreen and Abby, that with you and other, the staff and volunteers leading the way, we know the 2023 20th annual Thanksgiving feast at Catholic Charities is going to be another huge success. It'll be good to be together and celebrate the holiday and remember Eddie Tomas and keep his legacy going strong at Catholic Charities. Again, thank you so much for being here. And happy Thanksgiving to you guys.
Thank Thanks. you. Absolutely. Right and, and we wish <laughs> all of you a very happy Thanksgiving as well, all of our listeners and folks watching our live stream. And we invite you back every week on Tuesday for another edition of The Voice of Charity. For now, this is Phil Zapata with Katie Breedeman, and we thank you for tuning in and believing in the mission of Catholic Charities. <laughs>